candle. Set the mood for skincare. <laughs> Let's start today's video. Okay, so lately I've been breaking out like a lot and I think it's just a mixture of things like my sister is here So we've been going out and eating a lot. We've just thrown out my normal nutritional balance and probably like things like sleep and stress and all of that combined can really make one break out Here I've got this like huge zit that I kind of just popped well and I have another one here it's like it was really red um, and I have all this kind of like chin breakouts and as I'm reaching for my skincare every day like going through different ingredients and things I came up with this idea of to acid or to retinol that is the question because the thing is they're both really great exfoliants but I use them for very specific reasons and I think a lot of you you know like no matter how many videos you seem to watch or even however many videos we seem to make it's still kind of confusing so today I thought I would share the biggest differences between the two and how I approach using them and kind of when my favorite products that I've used for years now but also introduce some new products because I think there are so many new up-and-coming brands and products and before we start I want to thank creamy skin care for sponsoring a portion of this video because you are going to be so excited with the picks that I have to introduce to you guys because it's truly exciting when we come across you know affordable but also really effective skincare so let's take a little sip and begin <laughs> Okay, so let's start off with our chemical exfoliants today. I'm gonna really just talk about glycolic, lactic, and mandelic. And I feel like the popularity of these chemical exfoliants really dwindled down to three main reasons. The first is that they really do work for things like pores, uneven texture, uneven skin tone, everything that we want when we think of clear glowing skin. But the confusing thing is they come in all different kind of shapes, sizes, percentages, and formulas, which leaves us really thinking like, what the heck, where are we supposed to start? And the third thing really follows on from that, which is it affects people's skin differently. So, you know, we could be all using the same product, but it'll affect our skin in a completely different way. Sometimes it's too strong, sometimes it's not strong enough, sometimes it gives us redness, sometimes it doesn't, and we're just like, okay, what is going on, right? So let's simplify it. So what is the definition of exfoliate? Exfoliate, a verb, come apart or be shared from a surface in scales or layers. It helps the skin's natural cell turnover rate to speed up just enough to keep the dead cells from clogging up our sebaceous follicles or our pores because if and when they are filled it can easily lead to blackheads, whiteheads and acne. And the best case scenario is obviously prevention so that you know with daily and gentle use we prevent it from coming up at all. I'm not gonna go into all of them because we've made so many videos kind of detailing each one and what it's derived from and all of that. But essentially the AHAs come in different types. It's like same, same, but different. Some of them have a larger molecular size while others have a smaller. And depending on what size they are, it will determine how effective it can be, but also how irritating it can be. Also, some are more hydrating than others. So the ways that I've used and approached chemical exfoliants over the years has changed a lot because my skin itself has changed a lot. So before two to three or even four years ago, my skin used to be much oilier and it was way more volatile in the way that I would get breakouts. Sometimes I didn't even know why. And then at the time, my routine itself had a lot more different ingredients. Like I was playing a lot more with glycolic acids and stronger acids, but you know, I look back now and there was just like a lot more going on with my skincare, but also my skin. And I don't know if, is it the chicken or the egg, right? Like sometimes we use too much skincare and overcomplicate it, which is why our skin kind of freaks out, but also Sometimes it's like our skin is freaking out, which is why we're using a lot more different things to try and combat. So I don't know really which one it was. Back in the day, I used to have at least like 
two chemical exfoliants in my routine at one time. And I was really still just kind of figuring out my skin. But now it's like I can go weeks and months without ever really needing a chemical exfoliant until I kind of look in the mirror one day and I'm like, oh, I'm feeling a little bit patchy or a little bit like dull and then I'll reach for it. So it's kind of like instead of it being a staple in my routine and chopping and changing, it's now kind of like I I approach it more as a boost and a like a weekly or bi-weekly reset. Which then brings me on to the next part which is my five telltale signs of when I do reach for it now. So the first one is when I start realizing my forehead here it like gets really rough and bumpy but it's nothing that you can like physically see at any time when i run my fingers over my forehead it's really rough and uniformly rough it's like all the pores have been filled it can also be a little bit dry and sometimes i only realize like after i put some cc or bb cream on it or even foundation i'm like yeah this does not look smooth so that's my first sign when the texture is combined with a little bit of dryness that's actually when i'll go into my chemical exfoliant because going back to the definition it's to help and unglue the scales of dead skin basically and it's in these times that i will normally reach for lactic acid or mandelic acid so the reason for this is that both of these are really gentle and actually lightly hydrating and i have a few here that i can truly say i enjoy so let's start off with the creamy because it is the new baby so creamy skincare is actually a brazilian brand and they really remind me of your like affordable but effective skincare brands because obviously you guys love the ordinary and how it's just like clinically formulated they have a bunch of different acids in these pump bottles so yes let's start off with this one it's the seven percent ha gel it's got mandelic acid alpha arbutin and hip skin the reason why i love mandelic the most is because for my oily combination skin i almost feel like it rebalances my skin to the point where i'm no longer like oily combo i'm just more like normal combination and it has really the subtle ability to change the tone the texture of your entire skin and rebalance your face so i freaking love it and the special thing about all the creamy skincare products is like this texture it's a clear gel but when you put it on it's almost like oh my god it's got this like oh i don't know how to describe it it's like a seaweed snail mucin effect because the key ingredient that they put into all the skincare products is something called hip skin and hip skin is actually a brazilian bioactive ingredient which works together with the chemical exfoliant to help hydrate and replenish and really give you that lip from within look while letting the chemical exfoliant do its thing and it's a type of marine algae so every time we talk about seaweed we always think of like hydration right but actually these marine algaes are so beneficial for the skin because if you Think of things like, I don't know, La Mer or Osea. All of these are using these like ocean marine algaes to really help with retaining moisture. So the fact that this has mandelic acid as well as alpha arbutin, it's honestly like perfect for hyperpigmentation, rebalancing oily skin, but also just evening out that textural unevenness and bumpiness in the most mild way. And when I used this, it was so like plush and replenishing and hydrating that I didn't even need to use like a toner. Use this and it was just like beautiful and then finished it off with a moisturizer. I was using the fresh moisturizer or even like this one, which is the Skin Fix 
uh, barrier triple peptide on really cold and dry days. I would just use these. There's also the Dr. Wu, obviously. This is the 18% intensive renewal serum. This one is different to this because it's more like a toner consistency it's like a water and this one i've been using for years this is the first mandelic acid that i ever used it's like depending on your textural preference and how you're using it this one is much more lightweight and this is more potent in the mandelic but it doesn't have the power of the alpha arbutin that this one has so i will go in with maybe like a really soothing calming serum after this especially in the winter because i don't feel like this is hydrating enough because comparing the two, this is definitely like so hydrating. It's it's like a true serum. And then there's also the Naturia Mandelic Topical Acid 12%. And this also has some niacinamide and other fruit acids. And this is in between the two. Ding, ding, ding. Then if mandelic acid really isn't your jam, or maybe you're more interested in lactic acid, they also have a lactic acid serum, which is 5% lactic acid and 5% niacinamide. So that's like also a very beautiful gel consistency. The biggest difference I feel like between mandelic and lactic, if you're trying to decide, is really what skin type you have. Lactic acid, I feel like, isn't able to balance my skin as much as the mandelic acid, speaking from an oily person's perspective, um, but it does have this light exfoliation while being gently hydrating. And the niacinamide is just really good for an everyday keeping your skin in check. And it leaves your skin just so beautiful. And then coupled with that really replenishing, hydrating hip skin, like you're good to go. So another one that I've talked about a lot that I've finished is the Biosan Squalane Lactic Acid Resurfacing Night Serum. This one was like a milky consistency and the Squalane that worked with the lactic acid made it really easy to use. It was very like nourishing. This one is a little bit more expensive and for that reason, I think that's like a barrier to entry because Biosense products are a little bit pricey. And another lactic acid that I've tried is the Drunk Elephant Proteiny Power Peptide. So the Proteiny Power Peptide is probably my favorite of the Drunk Elephant line. And this one I actually realized when I put it on, I did feel a little bit of tingling. I don't know why. But the only gripe I have with Drunk Elephant obviously is that it's way too overpriced for my liking. So the second scenario or telltale sign that I reach for AHAs is kind of after my hormonal breakouts. Like I'm dealing with like, you know, there's this ring around pimples after they dry out and I'm just like, oh my God, what do I do with this? I'm like, do I pluck it away? Do I like scrub it away? Yeah, there's just, just this ring of skin. And normally for me, that's around my jawline, you know, because of my hormonal acne. So in times like this, this is actually when I will go into either glycolic acid or salicylic acid. Because in my mind, these are like, these are the frontline chemical exfoliants. Glycolic acid is obviously the most potent because of its molecular size. It's able to kind of reach deeper into the skin, but it can also cause drying because it's rapidly exfoliating your skin. And then BHA is um, is actually oil soluble. So I feel like it's, it's more potent in that it can sink deeper into your pores and really exfoliate like double time, you know, not just the top, but inside the pore. So when I'm dealing with like hormonal acne and the remnants of scars from hormonal pimples, then that's when I'll go into the two. So one thing I can do is use the 2% BHA liquid exfoliant, put it on a cotton pad and sweep it all over my face. And over time, this will help not only get rid of and exfoliate that bottom area to even it out and get rid of any residual kind of like redness and breakouts, but it will just help to also just calm down my pores in general. Because during my hormonal period, I also get very congested. Like all my pores, I feel like are just like pulsing. Probably because hormones really do affect the way that your sebum is produced if you have oily skin, right? There's also the 9% Polish Choice. This is a spot treatment that I'll dab over active pimples and I've been using that over this guy. And so it's been really good. You know, I just feel like peace of mind. I feel like I'm safe. 
I'm nurtured, my skin is like, you know, being healed, and I love this. So if you're looking for an affordable option, you can find so many of these kind of like 2% BHA spot treatments. This is the Bliss Acne Spot Treatment with 2% salicylic. Ding! Also really good. Now, glycolic, it's been a long time since I've used a glycolic acid toner. So there's the 8% Peter Thomas Roth that I used to use, and that was really good at just like really evening out my skin, like for texture, for tone. But yeah, I haven't used that for a while because I just haven't needed to. And then um, this one from Creamy Skin. Oh my gosh. I was actually shooketh to find out that this is actually a 10% glycolic acid and niacinamide moisturizer. Now guys, this shook me because I've never come across a glycolic acid moisturizer before. All the time, glycolic acids are either in a toner or a serum form, and I was like, holy crap, this actually makes sense, because if you're thinking about how to formulate effective skincare for sensitive skin, or for, you know, in the most gentle way possible, like, this makes the most sense. It's like, by the time you're moisturizing, there's actually already a buffer. And because moisturizers contain more emollients and humectants, it makes using a glycolic acid so much easier so that it doesn't irritate. And it is, once again, beautiful. It's like this really smooth moisturizer that goes on and just like gives your skin this hydration that like, I don't know. And yeah, like I can't even think of any other glycolic acid moisturizer. Honestly, I don't even know if one exists. Let me look. Glycolic acid. Yeah, there's like no, like nothing exists out there like this. I'm just like shooketh. And the bliss pads I used to use back in the day and they were like spa strength. Basically they were the highest percentage of glycolic acid before it goes into like a treatment or a spa grade, you know, where you actually have to go to someone to help you do that. I remember using those pads and it was just like, it was like a shovel through the snow. You can see it's physically brighter, but obviously it comes at a price because it can be very drying and it's not something that you, you would use every day. Because I remember after I used it, we used it, it was like there were little fire ants walking all over our skin. Like, you could feel it. And there's also this Saturday Skin 10% glycolic acid, and it also has like a complex of seven different types of ingredients that work together to make sure your skin isn't overly like dry. And I actually enjoy this a lot too. It's a toner, but it's slightly viscousy, and you can use this maybe like two to three times a week with a cotton pad and just swipe it all over your skin. Okay, so the next kind of situation is when I start like seeing little sebaceous filaments under my lip here. It's really weird, right? Like if you also go through this. Or my nose area is quite crusty and there's just like a bunch of random stuff going on. Normally when this happens to my skin, I'll actually reach for an AJBHA mask. So my two favorites are the Paula's Choice 25% AHA and BHA mask and the Peach and Lily Super Reboot mask. The beautiful like turquoise one. Also don't have to talk much about it. Those are my two go-to every time I feel that coming on. Now the fourth kind of telltale sign that I'll go towards chemical exfoliant is when my pores seem a bit more filled. Okay, so this comes twofold. You can either prevent them from even happening through daily use of gentle chemical exfoliants. But sometimes we don't do that and sometimes we just wake up and our pores are filled, right? So in that case, that's when I'll go to BHA because once again, BHA is oil soluble and it can go deeper into your pores to kind of unstick that glue, reduce it, and yes. And then the fifth and last kind of main situation I find my skin in is just general unevenness, texture, and color. And I find that if it's uneven in texture and complexion, it's normally because I haven't hydrated my skin enough. So that's when I would also amp up my hydrating like toners 
You can use like calming, soothing ingredients like calendula, lotus flower, uh, mugwort, or centella asiatica, and things like hyaluronic acid. Just load up on your hydrating ingredients. But also, mandelic acid and lactic acid can really help with that. Okay, wow, that was a lot, guys. I feel like I spoke for an eternity, but I just wanna share with you guys, that's kind of how I tend to approach what ingredients in what situation. So, now, moving on to the ultimate anti-ager, basically can do anything exfoliant, which is retinol. Okay, so once again, we've made quite a few videos on different types of retinol, you know, how to use retinol because this one is really confusing. So personally, I didn't used to use retinol as much, but after using a bunch of different types of retinols, I really think it's in its own kind of like league in being able to control the sebum production, which therefore helps with controlling your pores and making it look minimized. And it actually really comes down to two things. Retinol gives you short-term effects, but also long-term effects. So the short-term effect is that I found it really helps with what I just said, minimizing pores, reducing the sebum that's created, controlling breakouts because you're controlling the pore itself, and so it like reduces the potential of breaking out. And then the long-term effects is where you'll start seeing that it can help with fine lines and wrinkles and collagen production because it really is well studied for both of these. It can really short-term help control breakouts and long-term prevent aging. If we're comparing chemical exfoliants like the AHAs and BHAs, they aren't able to do the anti-aging part of it. Chemical exfoliants are only really there to help with that kind of more of the surface layer of things to make sure that the pores are clean, you know, there's no overproduction of dead skin, but retinol really is working on the surface and potentially over time with repeated use, like in the dermis layer of your skin. But with all good things, right? Because it can be really finicky to use and there's so many different types of retinols. I first started off with a 1% and I didn't know that 1% was gonna be so drying. 1% is a lot, let me tell you. So if you're just starting out, I would highly suggest you use something that's like 0.1 or 0.2. And then there's all these different types of derivatives. So I would say if you're first starting out, look for micro-encapsulated retinol. So micro-encapsulation means that it's basically like encapsulated and what this does is help with the degradation of the retinol itself it helps to prolong kind of like the shelf life of your product but on top of that it helps with sensitive skin types because it's a slow release of it you can imagine it like instead of it being a jet like a jet hose into your skin it's more like a a friendly sprinkler um, that releases over time so especially when you use it at night you know, you want it to work throughout the night. And so microencapsulation is, I think, the best delivery form of a retinol. And it's probably one of the best ways in preventing irritation. So that's my like biggest tip. This is the Adapalene 0.1% different gel. The reason why I love this is because it's so affordable. It's under $15 and it really just does the most. And it's like a very lightweight gel serum consistency. But guys, Handle with care because the Dapoline is like, it's the real deal. This is like the first time it's available over the counter. So with something that's so effective, you really got to like pace it out, like use it slowly. I had a friend who was just telling me like he was using it and it was so great at just like abolishing the breakouts over like one to two days. He was using it constantly and it completely dried out his skin and then it freaked out and then his whole face was red. The instructions does say that you use it consistently and you use it every day, but at the end of the day, you know your skin best. So just like use it moderately at the beginning and really find a good moisturizer and don't use any other chemical exfoliant when you're using your retinol. So to me, it's like pick one or the other. Chemical exfoliating days, are chemical exfoliating days. Retinol days are retinol days. And the two 
are mutually exclusive. I'm honestly not freaked out enough about anti-aging to consistently be using a retinol yet, but maybe when I'm like, when I start seeing more, I don't know, fine lines and stuff, but I think it's because I'm so chill about fine lines. I'm like, ah, it's part of life that I haven't been doing that, but there will be a time. If you're just getting into it, find a retinol moisturizer because once again, like the glycolic acid moisturizer, it creates a buffer so that your skin isn't just like absorbing all this like potentness all at once. Now, thankfully, there's a lot more like affordable retinol products as well. So this is the Bliss Youth Got This Pure Retinol Serum. It's the Advanced Skin Smoothing Serum. They also have a moisturizer. So that's something to check out. I personally haven't used both of them yet, but Deb, one of our beauty editors and our writers, um, has and she really loves it and hasn't experienced any kind of like peeling or drying effect after using it consistently and i feel like bliss is really just a really great brand that's also affordable the more potent ones are obviously paula's choice one percent booster and there's also the drunk elephant a passiony retinol cream which is also 1%. So I haven't used this one, but let me know what you think. Um, I just know that the Paula's Choice 1% used by itself can be too much or too overpowering. So I would say if you're interested in that one, mix it in with a super simple moisturizer that's just like full of ceramides, you know, peptides and things like that. And it can be awesome. So yes, for those of you who want to try out retinols, go low, go slow and use it once a week for about maybe three weeks and then build it up to twice a week, maybe three times a week after and just use it at night. Like with chemical exfoliants, I would say you can definitely use it during the day as well as at night. But for retinols, I highly recommend you only use it at night because you could really be opening your skin to a whole can of worms with things like photosensitivity, increased irritation because of UV, if you're not properly like protecting your skin with a sunscreen. You'll actually be putting on the retinols to create more damage to your skin because of the sun, you know? so. You don't want to do that. Those are basically my biggest tips. I hope that helps guys. Let me know your questions below. And I'm thinking we're going to start a challenge to follow on from this video on our community. So make sure you've checked out our community. That's where we go in depth and share all the juicy details of everyone's personal experience, whether it has to do with skincare, you know, nutrition, lifestyle, like mental, like health and relationships or anything like that. We have book clubs, we have movie clubs, and I really highly suggest you guys check out Creamy Skincare and all their products that are just newly coming to the US. I'm so excited and so thankful that we can work with them and really bringing you guys more information and more awesome products to discover at an affordable price. Like what more could we want, right? I hope this really helped you guys on your journey. If you're going through skincare struggles and trials and tribulations, just know that you're not alone and it's okay. Like every day is another learning process and it's actually, it should be really fun because we're doing this all together and just know that even though things for everyone else out there might seem perfect, we all go through the same things. You know, look at this guy, but who cares? And the more we can learn and understand the whys behind things happening, the more kind of like at peace and chill we can be so that, you know, we don't further stress ourselves out for no reason. Yeah. So hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye. Ding, ding, ding. Hmm. To chemical exfoliant or to retinol? That is the question. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot take myself seriously, okay.